Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to yet again another episode of Bearham Engines. So, guys, it is Tuesday now, so it's the day before you're going to be watching this. And what have I got going on today? So, first of all, we have got the blue 200 blocked Cosworth, which is the one I put liners in. I bored this um, and obviously there was only about sort of a thou and a half to come out of it. So I've just honed that, just leaving it to cool and that should be okay to get on the engine stand in a minute, give it a good wash um, and I'm going to be getting Paul on this job on Friday. Um, as soon as that one's off in a minute, I'm going to be getting this one up. Now this has got to go, this is the TVR block, it's got to go out to uh, plus 20. So we're not going to bore it and the reason is because John's faced the top um, first, so we're going to just rough hone that out and then finish hone it. Um, so that is the TVR. Then there is a box over here, and that box has arrived back yesterday from CTM Performance. Now, this box consists of the two cylinder heads that we've had ported um, by CTM um, and the crank assembly that has been balanced. So we can crack on with that TVR as soon as we've bought it. Um, so that would be ideal. This crank here came in yesterday from Paul. Um, so this is one of Paul's alphas that he's doing. He just wants that crank balanced. Um, and then we're going to be doing the clutch and the flywheel on a dummy crank afterwards. Because I think he's swapping the engine over and using the clutch and flywheel that's in the car at the moment. So he just wants that checked and balanced. Um, and also bought in the cylinder head to have the seats cut. And uh, just a little lick over the top which we've done now he has supplied i faced the exhaust valves he has supplied new valves on the inlets um, but when i put the valves in and vacuumed on they sort of didn't go up to about 200 on the machine so i've given them a little face and they go bang straight into the green which means that the faces on these from standard was not very good so that is not ideal for someone that hasn't got a vacuum tester because they're going to be lapping away forever um, and get nowhere because if the valves are out, you're peeing in the wind, to be honest with you. Um, so this Cosworth here, I've just whipped the sump up to Tom Upton. And there's a little bit of a crack on there because it's a big wing four wheel drive sump that someone's done a very good job of welding. One of the three legs that holds the front diff on had broke off at one point by the looks of it. Someone's welded it right on, but hadn't done a very good job on that. And there's a little crack at the top. So I've just got him to dig all that nasty weld out and sort that out and then we can get that on. Um, but in the meantime, um, oh, first of all, I must, I must uh, make an apology because the guy that owns this is called Andrew and apparently I've been calling him Matthew, so <laughs> I do apologise for that. Um, but this is the turbo off the car. I've just give Vince at Turbo Performance a call and Vince is going to be getting this picked up tomorrow. So two things, he's going to be stripping it completely, make sure everything's okay, if not, Give me a, a quote to sort of go through it and make sure it is all okay. The mounting bracket here that's been welded on for, um, for the actuator on the four wheel drive setup, because as you can see, that front housing there is how it would sit because obviously you've got the pipe coming out here at nine o'clock. Um, and this front face here is for the four wheel drive manifold. So if you imagine the head being here, um, the flange comes out there, but on the t this has got to be set up for a two wheel drive because we're going to be fitting a two wheel drive manifold, which means that body needs to be turned round. So this face here is sort of at that angle, um, which obviously means that the actuator is going to end up around here. So we're probably going to have to get a plate, um, bolt onto the back here, and change the position of the alternate uh, the actuator. Um, so that's another one that's going out to Vince tomorrow. The uh, the rocker cover, he wants us to blast that all back. We've got to fit um, the, we've got a sensor kit that's going in this. So we have to machine a bit on the back that's going to pick up off the sensor. Um, he wants that red, like the original two wheel drive Cosworths. Um, although it's going in an Escort, he just wants it red. because I think the car's red. Um, and then we have got this kit here, which consists of the sensor mount, which is going to go in the rocker cover, and then this is to be machined into the back of the cam, the inlet cam. So what we do is we put a little counter bore in the back of the cam, um, and obviously an M8, standard M8 thread, and then this just slides into the back, 
um, and then that will pick up off this trigger wheel here. Um, so that's another little thing we've got to do in the camshaft. Um, and then when the head is finished, we can get that all built up with all the bits here for the head. So ideal. Two Porsche heads, which John's got to sort out. There's a head over there with uh, broken glow plugs. So this is a job that we no longer even attempt in the vehicle. You've got to take the head off and you've got, these are M10, um, which usually aren't too bad. But the problem is with these, they do an M10 and an M8 uh, thread. And if we just take one of these out, you can see the design here. The length of that shaft there, the clearance is so minute, what happens is it sort of corrodes, furs up there, grips that like, you know, as if it's welded in there. And then as soon as you go to undo it, it just breaks off up here. So what we have to try and do is get the, the electrode out the center um, and then try and remove that body. But he spent about three hours getting that far. Um, so yeah, very, almost on the verge of getting a new head on that. Absolute nightmare. And you can imagine trying to do that in the vehicle. It's just not gonna happen. Good morning, guys. It is Wednesday now, Wednesday morning, and um, first job of the day is over on the milling machine. So I've got me coffee and me semi-clean cup, got me torch so you can see. Um, now this is the Flu 200 block, and all I've got to do, guys, is do one last machining process. So as I've said to you before, in the base of the block here, we have got the two lugs either side, just behind the core plugs there. So I've removed the core plugs. Obviously, I haven't given this a clean yet. And as I suspected, guys, with the studs that are in it, they've tapped right to the top. So we need to go another five mil deeper than that. So what I do is counter bore five mil down at the top of that lug, just so we don't put any strain on the lug so it breaks off. And then we drill and tap another five mil down. So I'll get that done, guys. And that is this block finished. So I'm going to get it on the engine stand, give it a thorough clean. Um, and that's Paul's baby on Friday. Right then, guys, it is now Wednesday lunchtime, actually. Um, and I have had a good sort out of the workshop. So all this stuff here is to do, um, except for that crank. That's Paul Doves and that's his head over there. But this stuff is to do just to add a 200 TDI um, defender block come in for a rebore. Um, so that's one thing we've got to do probably next week now. Um, but I've had a good old sort out of the engines here, guys. So. We've got the Series 1 Land Rover engine there that Isaac is cracking on with, just waiting for a couple of little piddly bits to get on with that. Um, one being a gauze that goes on the bottom of the pump before we can put the sump on, and also a little, a little screw, um, one of these here, that holds in the, uh, the rocker shaft, I do believe. Um, still waiting for one of those, so yeah. A couple of little piddly bits before we can crack on with that. Um, but he's got the head on, etc. so all good. This Cosworth here, got everything laid out, cleaned and ready to assemble. This is obviously just a short motor. Um, all the balls are finished now. This is the one I put the ductile iron liners in. You can see the four existing studs that were in it. Um, so we've cleaned out the threads and put all those in, lovely jubbly. And these are the two that I've just redone. So you can see there, I've done the five mil deeper um, down in the base of the block so we don't break that lug off and you can see those studs are in now we've put the the 17 mil groove in the top five mil deep for the the, the oil seals um, so that thing now I'm confident is going to be bulletproof um, all we've got to do is size and balance the rods obviously put the cutouts in the pistons which I'm going to do later on today and um, yeah just get it all put back together guys this is me BMW you know about that We've cleaned up all the, um, the pistons, etc. here for, uh, for this, or what is it, the P100, the Rover, um, so for Ken Newton. So John, that's John's little baby first thing when he comes back next week. Uh, so you see there, I've got the, some empty engine stands, guys, which sounds ridiculous, but that's good news because it means I haven't got piles of engines. I haven't took anything on for about a month. Um, and that's so we can just catch up, take the pressure off me, um, and just get done what we've got done. But we've started to take one or two in now. Um, there was a load of bits over there for the normally aspirated Cosworth, and they are now over on this bench. So we've got the crank all balanced. Rods are all sized. Everything's done on this. The cylinder head all done, ported. Um, obviously, this is because it's normally aspirated. We've gone for the, the big ports on the head, um, the Acrolyte normally aspirated pistons. So we've obviously got to sort out the compression ratio there. 
and the block over here. So this is the block that we received back yesterday from um, a company called, well, what are they called? Yeah, so this is the block that we had back yesterday from stitching. So I don't know whether you can see this guys, but there's various areas that have been cracked um, and we've had them stitched. So this is a process that we have used in the past. You know the Cosworth, with the, two, with the 200 blocks, we'll long stud it, but you can't do it on the 205 blocks. So we've had it all stitched. Um, and we've done this process before, it's been successful. And that is just a good way of, of um, re you know, saving a block. Basically we've had, a lot of the time, it cracks on the external, on the older blocks from frost damage. Um, and it's a really, really good, process to do these stitch in here they're almost like a like a, a sort of hook thread if you like and they if you see closely look they overlap um, and they basically pull the material into into themselves um, where you need to you can put an insert in and then you just machine over the top um, and that is as strong as the original cast iron believe it or not obviously they put them all in with um, with a sealer like a loctite um, to save any sort of penetration from water going in the threads but yeah I'm fully confident that's going to be great I mean this stitching is not cheap guys but then these blocks aren't cheap now are they so you know with the work that we've done with the uh, top hat ductile iron liners you're looking to get a decent one of these blocks you're looking between 500 and a thousand quid anyway and then you've got to do the work to it so that has um, resolved that issue I'm confident so that is that block now we can get built up when I've got a spare minute um, Andrew's block there we have the cylinder head all done so here is the cylinder head all ported so we've got the 24 and a half mil ports both sides so 25 on the um, on the inlets so this is a head that's good for 600 plus horsepower easy um, but he wants to run eventually about 500 so we've matched the manifold um, all we've got to do is just give that head a little face when we've sort of worked out our compression um, and there's all the bits to put it back together guys so cracking right on had a great sort out of this workshop we've just got these um, scannier heads that we're doing at the moment with just a uh, valves and seats job and then they can go um, but yesterday we had another engine come in so this is a 1275A series I want to say it's out of a mini moke but I know the owner um, is gonna, I know the owner Gary is gonna correct me on that because I don't think it is a moke. This is something slightly different to that. Um, but yeah, he's basically supplied, as we love it, he's supplied all the new parts, um, cleaned everything within an inch of its life. This thing has actually been machined by Hamleys um, about three or four years ago, I believe. Um, so all he wants us to do is build it up. First of all, we've got to strip the head out, check everything. Um, he's got some new pistons, which are murals, which are good piston. We've just got to check all the sizes, guys, make sure that they're running the right running clearance. Obviously the head, he said, has been bought new. It's been about 18 months ago, but as you can see, Gary stored that absolutely wonderfully. Same with the crank, been ground, I think. Uh, what we got here, 10 on the big ends, 30 on the main standard thrust. So again, just check everything. With the rods, do a usual, check the housings, balance them, um, and then put this all together, guys. He's got a nice Piper cam here with the vernier pulley, all the correct bearings, a uh, load of other gaskets and that. So just as, we, just as we like them, really. So that is a lovely little assembly job there for Gary, which we're going to get done in the next couple of weeks. But yeah, um, all going on, guys. Been a bit of a Cosworth week. Um, although John's off, Isaac and I have actually got quite a lot done. And I've really, really enjoyed it. Now I've got a lot more organised in here, a lot more cleaner, um, know where I am. So yeah, all good guys. Thoroughly enjoying myself at the moment. Right, everyone, that is pretty much all we've got time for today. Um, there's plenty more footage I've got that I would like to put in today's video, but I don't want to bore you too much for too long. Um, so that's going to go in Friday's video. Uh, but I just want to finish off, guys, on a little bit of a change of subject regarding the S54 engine that we've done several videos on from a friend of mine and customer, Tom. Um, now, the reason I want to clear the air and make an apology, firstly, the apology is to Dave from Asprey Motor Works, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Um, and the reason I want to clear the air is because, obviously, people that know Dave know that Asprey Motor Works... Um, 
and know that his Instagram channel, we always put in little videos on, uh, very, very funny, always says it as it is. Basically, there's a, there's a lot of people that obviously watch my channel and watch Dave's because Dave's been tagged in my videos, um, particularly the one I did a week or two back, um, stating that too many busy bodies have been involved in this S54 engine. Dave obviously took a little bit of a offence to that, which is fair enough, and then started doing a couple of videos on what he's found with this S54, which to me is fair game. I had to smile there because that's exactly what um, I do, playing me at my own game. But um, I just wanted to say that Dave and I have had a long conversation on Saturday. There's never been any animosity. Um, we've had a little bit of a, a sort of dabble on social media, but it's all fun and games, isn't it? Um, I've also spoke to Tom and I've spoke to Dave quite extensively through text messaging regarding the S54. Now, I'm not going to go too much into it now, but I will do one or two videos on the conclusion that Dave's come to um, and myself, and we've agreed on what potentially could have been the issue. So it's quite interesting there. Um, I'm not one of these that's ever tried to sort of, I never try and say that I'm right on everything, that we'd never make mistakes, because we do. Um, and this could have been one of those jobs. So it'd be quite interesting to go into that a bit further, um, further detail. Dave's obviously building the engine now. Now I'm the one that suggested um, that Dave got involved with this. If there's a second pair of eyes that I would like to have on any sort of BMW, it would be Dave's. Um, he's been do been involved with BMWs and building the engines way longer than I've been building engines at all. Um, so I've got the utmost respect for him. He's fantastic at what he does, and I've got no qualms if I ever need advice. Um, Dave's the first person that I will ring. So, yeah, I just want to apologise to him for the um, busybody. Uh, fortunately, he has been a bit of a busybody with this because, um, obviously, Dave's involved in building it. He And he wants to make sure that it's going to be all right. Um, so he's the man for the job. Um, yeah, obviously, I've spoke to Tom. There's no animosity there. Tom and I are friends, um, have been for a while, and... Um, yeah, it's all good and it's just one of those unfortunate sort of things that has happened through a a series of um, maybe small errors or, or what have you. But yeah, we'll have a look into that and do have some videos on that. But yeah, just wanted to clear the air, guys. No animosity between Dave and I. I've got the utmost respect for him and um, yeah, top guy. But um, until another video, guys, thank you very much for watching. Have a great evening and... Um, we will see you in Friday's video. Cheers, guys.